Window to the World is a visualization system that superimposes the CAD data, the design data, over the vehicle so that we can detect discrepancies very quickly. This uses an array of 17 infrared cameras. The infrared cameras detect the tripod, the fly stick and also the position of the vehicle to superimpose a spatial coordinate system over the vehicle coordinate system. The idea was to use measurements and the superimposition of the data on the monitor here to enable visualization of those sections of the later vehicle where the hardware may not yet be available. But above all, to produce a comparison of the design situation, the target, with the as-built situation in the actual vehicle. We haven't integrated people into this yet. That's the logical next step. Also to link motion capturing with this system. This involves putting an employee, for example, into a suit with tiny reflectors and having him install a component. We can record this with the tracking system to verify ergonomic aspects at an early stage, for example. We use the room to check data that either come from development and thus are product related or from our plant planner and thus are plant related. We visualize results and make decisions based on the virtual models. To model an entire plant we reduce the scale of course if we want to see the entire plant. But the great thing about the technology is that we can change the scale at any time. We can zoom in on every detail, can immediately get a bird's eye view of the plant. We enable the decision makers to have a look at things beforehand, to look at them beforehand in the actual surroundings exactly the way it will look later. We can change facades at any time, both the geometry and the lighting. We could also park a different car in front of it. It's primarily about saving time, lowering costs and improving decision making reliability. The long-term mission is to offer this technology outside of special rooms. We're standing in a one-off. Audi only has one room like this. We want to make this technology available to the average engineer, decision makers at their workplaces. A brand new fascinating technology has made its way to tool making, the 3D printer. It enables us to produce the parts faster and more cost-effectively. For example, with the 3D printer, we don't have any waste like we would with metal cutting, which means we're faster and more cost-effective. Here we see a hot forming die with cooling channels that today are still bored in the conventional manner. In the future we want to print segments. We want to print these cooling channels, as can be seen so well here in this sample. You can essentially bore cooling channels around corners, making the production of these dies much, much faster and much, much more economical. I believe that this is just the beginning for this technology. In the future we'll have even bigger machines with which we can work even faster and produce larger workpieces. There definitely is going to be a major revolution in the next few years. The Audi Matrix LED headlights are a prime example of our lighting strategy. They're dynamic, interactive and three-dimensional. The high beam section is divided into individual segments. A camera detects which zone is occupied by an approaching or leading vehicle and deactivates the high beam in precisely that zone. We have a great number of dynamic functions in our vehicles today. First and foremost are the dynamic turn signals. The turn signal runs from the inside out and even if the vehicle is partially obscured, you can tell which direction it will be turning. The laser light in the Audi R8 LMX doubles the range of the high beam compared with a conventional LED headlight, which improves safety substantially at night. The laser headlight is becoming intelligent, very intelligent. 
Our wind tunnel is still among the best when it comes to aerodynamics, but it's the best in the world for aeroacoustics. Our wind tunnel achieves wind speeds of 300 kilometers an hour with a drive power of roughly 2.4 megawatts. About half the tests we perform concern aeroacoustics, that is wind noises, those vehicle noises that are caused by the slipstream. The other half of our tests are aerodynamic tests, tests that are intended to help design the car to be as aerodynamic as possible. We can reach this wind speed in roughly 20 seconds. The maximum power of the turbine makes this very easy. The possibilities we have here are unique. The greatest benefit is simply the longer amount of time. You can try out different things here in just one flight. During an actual jump, it's over before you know it. The electronic vehicle job card gives us the data we need to build a car. It contains all the information we need to build exactly the Audi our customer ordered. The EVJC shows our employees on monitors at their workstations which component needs to be integrated into which vehicle. Photos, coloured areas and diagrams also make information transfer easier for the employees. The employees also receive indications showing which container has the parts required for integration. Meanwhile, it's been introduced at nearly all areas of the Audi plant. The EVJC makes our work sequences simpler and safer and helps us to continually optimize our processes, the vehicle quality and especially workplace ergonomics. With the intelligent dye, we truly revolutionized forming technology. The intelligent dye enables us to produce extremely complex geometries in our bodies much more reliably. We essentially developed the stabilization program for forming technology with the intelligent die. The first thing you have to do is make the process visible. We did this by installing laser sensors that enable us to monitor how the material flows into the die. At the same time, these active distances give us the ability to automatically redistribute the forces in the die so that we can consistently produce components with optimal quality. We're now developing the self-learning die to further improve process stability in the press shop, reducing the reject rate for formed parts. We use robots to do the things they're good at, namely to perform monotonous tasks and to do things for us that might cause us back pain or similar problems. I haven't yet had the pleasure of working hand in hand with a robot. It's pretty exciting. The products are just lying there in the containers unsorted and the robot has to locate the right part, decide where to grab it and then plan the appropriate motion path to remove the part from the container.